Hi, I'm Dave Miller. I work at Hearing Games. I've been working on calibrating headphone setups for audiometers. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process that I've developed. It's kind of old school. It's the way they used to do it long before they had, uh, what do they call them, artificial ears that they could plug audio meters into and get much more accurate measurements. Um, that's sort of the modern way. Unfortunately, though, that equipment costs quite a lot, and it's um, a little outside of our reach right now for the, for the project. So, you know, maybe someday we'll get to that, but right now we're kind of gone old in time to figure out exactly how to go about doing all this. Um, I've done, I don't know, something like 12 devices now. It does look like within a manufacturer, like within the iPad range or within the Kindle Fire range, the devices are pretty consistent. Um, and the same is true within the headphone ranges too. I've used two different styles of headphones. Today we're using um, the HD202 by Sennheiser. I think this is actually um, out of print now or out of availability. So I'm not quite sure we're gonna re replace that with. I had also used another headphone whose name escapes me at the moment. Um, previously, but it turned out that that maybe wasn't quite as good at isolating people from the background noise. These Sennheisers have um, pretty good foam lining um, and they do a good job of fitting over my large ears so they should fit over kids' ear, ears pretty well. I've heard that on infants um, this is probably too large and that sticking a sponge or something in between kind of props it up on the kid's head and they can hear a little bit better that way. We're also today working with iPad minis. Um, this is just a, I think a standard iPad mini. I don't think it's a newer one. I think it's kind of an older one. It's running iOS. I built this box here, which is what I'm calling the headphone calibrator box. It actually has an Arduino in it and a number of relays that you can hear a clicking sound from, unfortunately. I'd like to do like a solid state version sometimes so that we can get rid of that clicking sound, but I don't know that that's that critical right at the moment. Um, the, uh, the, the key features here are that it has an audio input and two outputs for two different lineups. And what this box is going to do is it's going to switch between displaying the sound to what I'm calling channel 1 and channel 2. Um, it'll switch which one it's sending the sound to every second. You'll hear that with the click, click, click. And you'll hear that it switches from going to the speakers to the headphone, to the speakers to the headphone. And the device that's under calibration is the one that's um, sending to the headphones and it does it through this cable runs up here into channel one input and comes out of channel one output to the headphones which will be on my head and the second channel is being powered by a kindle fire right now it doesn't really matter what device because we're going to use a audio meter to make sure that we're getting the right sound level from the speaker. Um, the speaker, there's two of them obviously for left and right, is going to display the sounds every so often. And you can hear the clock in the background. I can't actually be doing calibrations when that's happening. Um, so that's just a timing thing. So let's begin. Uh, the first task is to make sure that the speaker, and I've been using the right speaker first, uh, is actually producing a sound of 40 decibels when I have the Kindle Fire set to produce a sound at, at minus 30 dB, 1 kilohertz. And I'll just turn the Kindle Fire on now. Swipe the screen. And I think you should be able to hear that 
Um, I'll turn the sound meter on, let it kind of calibrate itself. And you can see on the sound meter that when I'm speaking it's um, actually pretty loud. But let me stand quiet for a minute and we can see what decibel reading we're getting. So it's about 40.9 or so dB, which isn't bad. You can hear the refrigerator. Normally I would do this in the bedroom that's quieter, but it's messier, so I didn't want to show you that on film. Um, and we're getting the refrigerator noise in the background a little bit. The calibration screen is fairly straightforward. You can find it in the app. Um, and as I said, I've been using the 1 kilohertz minus 30 dB, generating a sound from the speaker that's 40 dB at about, oh, I don't know, four feet from the speaker. The point is, is that the sound meter, the see it's true too that when I sit next to it, it tends to um, reduce the sound level a little bit. It's only generating 36 at the moment, so I'm going to turn the volume up just a hair. There, no, no, that, that's good. That's about 39 and a half dB, and that's well within the accuracy of the measurement equipment. Um, so that solid tone is coming from the right speaker. Oh, actually, now it's coming from the right speaker. Now it's going to be too loud. Let's get this right. Okay, perfect. 39.6 dB going to the right speaker. Now I'm going to put the headphones on and I'm going to put this right uh, ear pad off my ear so I can hear the sound and put the left ear pad on my ear. And then I'm going to get this iPad, this is the device we're calibrating, running. And again, one kilohertz minus 30 dB. to the left ear, so the calibrated sound's going to the right speaker, the sound's going to the left ear. Now when I turn on the headphone calibrator, you should be able to hear the tick-tock, and at every tick and tock it's either going to turn on the speaker and turn off the headphone, or it's going to turn on the headphone and turn off the speaker. This allows me to compare the relative sound level and then I need to adjust the volume here on the iPad until it's perceptually the same. That's too high. And that's too low. So it's a little hard to tell when it's exactly the same, but it's pretty easy to tell when you're too quiet or too loud. Um, and so that's what I tend to do is I tend to go like to the tick mark below and, and verify that it's too quiet go to the tick mark above and verify that it's too loud and then the one in between is as close as it's going to get which should be pretty accurate once I've done the right ear um, I, I take this little white out thing and I put a dot on the screen right where the uh, volume setting is and then I change the device to be right ear here so I'll switch this around and left ear here so now the left speaker and go through the same process that's too loud quiet and that's just right okay so the two sides came out to the same tick mark which on all these iPads with these headphones is seven from mute so if you 
if you set the volume all the way down to mute and go volume up seven times, you'll reproduce the setting. Um, what I've also done is I've put these little hearts here um, and the point of the heart lines up with the setting that we want and I've also made a note that this is device number four matching to headphone number four and that seven ticks above mute is where this where the perceived headphone volume matches the measured speaker volume of 40 dB when we're at the minus 30 setting on our devices. Which makes it all work out so that the quietest sound we produce is 20 dB and then we go 20, 30, 40, 50 dB. So we have five of them in the game. Um, and that's how I do it. It's kind of straightforward. It took several iterations to get the headphone calibrator correct. I needed um, our programmers to develop the calibration menu. And there's a lot of elaborateness here because I needed to be able to verify that, in fact, when you go uh, from minus 30 dB to minus 40 dB to minus 50 dB and so forth, that it really was measurably 10 dB differences. And I also did it at all the different frequencies that we use, 501K, 2K, 4K, 8K. Um, some of these are not quite measurable by my sound meter, so I wasn't able to exactly, exactly um, measure all of them, but I was able to measure the vast majority of them. Um, and I think that's probably about it.